Welcome back to In Session. I'm Vinnie Politan. and Richard Cannon Jr.'s testimony has been crucial to the prosecution's case. And watching this guy, he has really uh, an outright matter-of-fact way of saying his sister helped with the murders. But the defense says this guy's lying. So what does Cannon Jr.'s body language say? Here to talk about his testimony, In Session law enforcement contributor Mike Brooks. Body language expert Patty Wood, who's been watching all this testimony, and criminal defense attorney Dan Agatino. All right, let me start with you, Patty. All right. Big picture. You sat there, you watched this guy. What, right. What did you think? Well, actually, he did what a lot of liars do. He tried to keep... Liars do. A lot of liars try to keep <laughs> neutral. Very little facial expression, very little nuance in the voice, lack of vocal variation, except in some very key places. Uh, when he was asked who decided where to bury the body. Well, let's take a listen to that right now. Let's take a listen and a look at that Remember, testimony. We'll take a look at it. It's neutral and does this like quick rabbit jump in and answers. Watch what happens. Okay, let's take a look. And listen. Did you have to get a storage unit first? No, we went dug a hole first. And who dug the hole? Me and Stacy. Both of you worked on that? Yes. How did you choose where in the yard to bury your mother? That's what Stacy decided on where to bury her. Did you have to go to the storage? All right, so what did we see there? Well, there was, it's because his voice and facial expressions are normally so neutral. What we saw was just a subtle difference when he said, Stacy. He showed a facial expression, the eyebrows went up. The head went forward, and the vocal emphasis, very staccato, hard hit on the name Stacy. And what does that tell you? It tells me that that was her decision, that she was involved in the burying of the body. Wow. Real Mike Brooks, what do you think of, of this guy's testimony? And you buying this guy? Are you, you going to believe this guy beyond a reasonable doubt? Well, you know, yesterday, I was I was mixed. I believed some of it, and I didn't believe it. But, you know, we, we just heard from the prosecutor, and some of the points she's making about Stacy's involvement in a suicide note, you know, I have to believe what he's saying right now. All right, Dan Agatino, your thoughts on watching this guy inside the courtroom? He's a confessed killer, but the jury's got to believe him. Exactly, and I don't think he has the kind of credibility he needs in order to persuade a jury. And why is that? Well, because look at the way he's displaying. Um, he has this affect that just, he comes across as kind of creepy, and he is, right? Oh, okay. He's a murderer who doesn't have the uh, mental capacity that we would hope a witness would have. He was uh, adjudicated as not having all of his faculties. Um, then that was reversed, but I think that there's still going to be doubt in the mind of the jurors. All right, let's take a look at, at some more of this testimony, Patty. And again, you watched it all, and you're yes. writing notes and pointing some stuff out to uh, our producers. Let's take a look at more of uh, Richard Cannon Jr. on the witness stand. Did you kill your mother? Yes, I did. And was someone there to assist you in killing your mother? Yes, there was. And who was that? Stacy, my sister. Okay, you have to, if you listen to all the testimony when he's talking, he goes, Stacy and me, Stacy and me, we, we, we. It comes out, very little vocal emphasis, but when he is asked specifically, there, all of a sudden there's a slight change again in the face. And it's very subtle, but distinguishable. And, it, and again, it tells you that he's telling the truth there. In that particular moment. In that moment. How, how about that, Dan? You know, and the other thing, Dan, I want to point out is our viewers at home have been uh, writing in on Facebook, taking our poll, whether or not they believe this guy. And the numbers were jumping up, up, up the more we, they were right. watching him. And we're going to check back in with those numbers in a moment. But Dan, how about that? I mean, he comes across, uh, he has no, does he have a reason to lie here? Yeah, he does. He Why? does. Why? Why? He I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you right now. Because of his own conscience, if he can convince himself that, all right, this wasn't my own doing. I, you know, my sister was in on it. I had her blessing. I had her justification. Maybe he could sleep at night. I mean, it's it may be a personal agenda. It may not make sense in our world. Remember that. He's got his own world he lives in. He talks to people who are dead. He's got all these uh, mental aberrations. So, yeah, he may be displaying behavior that shows he's telling the truth. 
but it may be the truth contrived in his own mind. It doesn't mean it's a truth in reality. It's just something that he believes is true. He wants it to be true. Well, here's a little bit of reality from the viewers who are watching this testimony. 79% on the poll on Facebook are finding this testimony credible. Just 21% not believing him. Mike Brooks, that, those are good numbers for someone who has admitted killing two people, who has admitted trying to kill himself, who has malingered, has right. rubbed feces on himself, grown a long beard, lost 100 pounds when he's trying to starve himself. So despite all that baggage that's in that courtroom, People are believing them. They are. In fact, I, I got I got one while we were sitting here just said, how can anyone believe that Richard Kennedy, a double murderer, is telling the truth? But then she goes on to say, where is the DNA evidence linking his sister Stacy to their mother's murder? So, you know, that's another, that's another, another factor. factor. Exactly. Okay. But uh, I'll I believe take, right Let's now. take some phone calls. Uh, we've been asking for your questions about Kennedy Jr.'s testimony. And now we have our experts here. Let's uh, answer some of those questions. Let's go to North Carolina and Stephanie. Good morning, Stephanie. Hi, Vinny. What do you think of this character, this, this witness? He's the star for the prosecution, Stephanie. I think he is very believable, very credible. What is it? What, what is it about his testimony that makes it so credible? Um, he's very quick with his answers. And, I mean, I know that they're probably... Um, they know what questions are coming to him, but I think his eye contact is pretty, pretty good. Okay, thanks so much for the call, Stephanie. How about that, Pat? You know, quick answers. It's not like he's sitting up there and saying, "All right, how, how should I answer this one?" He's just answering. And, and a normal everyday liar, because there's different levels of liars. Pausing before you respond is an indication of deceit. In a trial like this, where he's had a lot of time to prepare, that's not necessarily a good answer, because he's prepared the answer. He's actually answering many times before yeah, the question. Yeah, I was going to say that. He's yeah. jumping. He's stepping, so that's stepping on the, that's on the not, questions. That's not good. It, it's, the, it's the affect. It's whether he expresses or not. Liars have a difficult time faking that. You have to feel, show, say when you're telling the truth. It's feel, show, say. So um, if your boyfriend says, sure, I love you, and then smiles <laughs> late, he's lying about yeah, it. I love you. All right. So. Thanks for that. <laughs> All right, Carmen is in Wisconsin. Good morning, Carmen. Carmen, you're on the air. I'm doing well. How about you? Okay, yes, Carmen, what are, you, what are your thoughts about this testimony? I believe your expert there is prepared, and he is fixated, and I think he is just trying to appease and duty. I just I don't believe him. So uh, you're not believing If you're on this jury, you're not believing this guy, so you may find reasonable doubt in this case. I would find reasonable doubt because I have known liars and I've dealt with liars and if you're prepared and he's got a lot of time obviously to prepare his testimony and he's being led, I feel like he's regressing, you know, and trying to appease uh, everybody and I'm, I don't believe him. All right, Carmen, thanks so much for the call. Thanks for watching. How about that, Dan? There's a, there's a juror for you, right? Yeah, and you know what? She said these words. He's regressing, and I think he is. He's going back, and he's going to rewrite it the way he wants it to have happened instead of the way it did happen. Uh, That's what I would argue. Let's get one more call, and we've got uh, Tony in South Carolina. Good morning, Tony. Good morning. How are you? Fine. How are you? Good, good. Tell us your thoughts about this testimony, because this is, this is crucial in this case. This is the prosecution star witness. This is the guy who was in the middle of everything, and if you believe him, you've got you've to find uh, Stacy guilty. Your thoughts? Yeah. Well, I, I'm i not going to try a diagnosis or anything, but I've been a psych nurse for a long time, and this dude acts like a sociopath. Those the sociopaths, they go for so long trying to be hidden, but eventually they're going to want their, what they've done come out. Kind of like serial killers, but not really, you know what I mean? Eventually they're going to want to brag and, and say what they've done. So I believe him, and I believe his sister, something's wrong with her, too. All right. Thanks so much, Tony, for that call. We appreciate it. And, and Mike, when, you know, at the end of the day here, and you've arrested many people. Oh, yeah. When you arrest people, do they try to, even if they admit their guilt, try to take that guilt and share it with someone else who may or may not be involved to try to make themselves feel better? Well, sociopaths, many of them do because it's not all their fault. They did it because someone else was involved or made them do it. They always try to put the blame on someone else besides themselves. And I think you'll agree with me on that. And, uh, and with, with this guy, yeah, I think he's trying to put the blame on her. But how could she not know, Vinny, that, she, that you know, that the mother was buried there, that something was going on in that house? Right in her own her backyard. Room? In her own backyard. You're going to tell me that she didn't notice somebody digging it up? And how do you bring a plate in there? 
I'm sorry. And then the suicide. That kind of wrapped it up for so me. So what I'm hearing from Mike Brooks is he loves a lot of the other evidence, so he doesn't even necessarily have to believe this guy. No, exactly. He puts the rest of the piece together. Mike Brooks, Matty Wood, thank you so much. And, of course, Dan Agatino, appreciate your time this morning.